Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with Match Quarters. Welcome to another episode of the Art of X Show. Today we're taking a very complex issue, which is spacing. I'm going to try and make it as simple as I possibly can without using a lot of jargon, uh, really trying to break it down to the minutiae so that you can understand it. This is a topic that is often talked about uh, in coaching circles, but not a lot of people know exactly what it means. And in fact, I'll be honest, I had no idea what the term spacing even was until probably about five years ago when I started really studying the Saban system. You hear it a lot in NFL language and uh, obviously in the Saban language. So it's one of those concepts that you probably know exactly what that person is talking about, but you've never heard it in that term. So I'm going to break it down as simple as I possibly can. We're going to get into the mechanics of seven, eight, and nine man spacing, what that means, how do we start teaching it, and then how does the coverage dictate the fit structure. I think spacing more than ever is an important topic because as more and more people are trying to intermix even in odd spacing, which I'll get into, also with the different cover structures of too high, one high, how does that all mesh together? It's important now how to change your fit structure depending on the covers that you're running. So it is important. There is not a one size fits all explanation. There is not a one size fits all fit structure or even a coverage structure. We're all doing different things. We all see different things depending on where we are in the country. So I'm trying to break this down so that if you have no idea or you've never heard the spacing or you don't want to admit that you know what spacing is, I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible today on the Art of X show. So what is spacing? It is a coach speak concept to talk about run fit structure. This is not hey, how do you fit power? How do you fit counter? How are you fitting zone? How are you fitting insert? That is not it. I will go through the, the basic fit structures later on, but I want to make it very clear. This is not how are you fitting certain gap schemes. This is the structure in which you are fitting the box. So I want to start with what is odd and even, because if we don't even understand what is the odd spacing, what is even spacing, then it doesn't even matter. And I'll admit, there are times Times when I've gotten this wrong, what is odd spacing does not mean that you are in an odd front. Even spacing does not mean that you are in even front. You can have odd structure, but fit it even spacing. So what exactly is this? Coach A, please tell me. Even spacing means that there is a natural bubble, and that is a B gap. If you talk about four down structure, there is a natural gap in the B gap. This happens all the time when OCs get up and you say, draw me your favorite run concept. The first thing that they're going to do is put an even front, and they're going to draw it to even spacing. This is single gap fits. Everybody's lined up in, in, in a spot. You've got an open B gap. That is even spacing. Now, from there, you can fit things differently. So we haven't even got to seven, eight, nine-man spacing. I'm purely talking about front structure. You can be an odd, odd front team. So let's say you're an under team or even an Oki team, but you move constantly. You're, you're using reductions. A lot of 3-3 three, three teams, like if you talk to an odd stat guy and they're like, oh yeah, we're constantly single gap moving one way or the other, that's even spacing. You're getting in, someone, if you're go, lining up in a 404, someone's ending in a five, someone's ending in a one, and someone's ending in a B gap. You're going to solid up the C gap with one of your backers, but there is still a B gap bubble. You're not playing a 505 and reducing those guys or splattering fist heavy, however you want to talk that close in the B gap. That's odd spacing. So what is odd spacing? That means we are closing the B gaps. There is no bubble inside the box. So all the bubbles are going to be in the C gap where you have overhangs directly in front of them. That is the easiest way to explain odd and even spacing. So if you're sitting there, let's go back through. Even spacing means that there is a natural B gap bubble. Odd spacing means there is no B gap bubble. Those are closed. You can play an even front but play odd spacing. You can play an odd front, 
but play even spacing. You can do both at the same time. So you can be odd and have odd spacing. If you are a tight front uh, mint, mint guy, you are playing odd spacing. If you are an even front, but you like to double gap it, you like to have twos and fives, and then you kind of play lag and reduction front, you are playing odd spacing. Another easy way to fit, it, fit this is in odd spacing, a lot of the times your inside backers are going to fit A to C. So you're because you're closing the B gap, you have an A gap and a C gap. They got to get there. So if you're if you're telling your guys fit A to C, you're playing odd spacing. If you're telling guys to fit a gap or, hey, we're going to snap down, you know, if we get a down block, DN's going to DN's going to go heavy. We're going to snap down. Those are all kind of even spacing structures. And I'll go into that because that's where the spacing seven, eight, nine man spacing comes into the rump game, which is what we are going to talk about. So what is number man spacing what does that mean the easiest way to start doing this is to line everybody up to a 21 personnel formation the problem is when you start with 10 personnel it's going to get very confusing if this is a brand new concept that you've never learned about or that you've never taught before the easiest way again is to start with a 21 personnel front and so in seven man spacing we have 21 personnel. So visually, I'm setting this up. We have a tight end. We have a sniffer or a fullback. And we have a running back. Okay. We have 21 personnel. Now, if you are seven-man spacing, you are playing with two safeties that are going to be secondary to the run fit. They do not have a primary gap. They are not responsible directly into the run fit. They are going to have to take verticals, and they are going to have to take number two out. You are playing with seven men in the box. And the way that you highlight that is, again, draw an over front to 21 personnel. You have three linebackers, right? Your Sam linebacker is usually in charge of the outside shoulder of the tight end. If you play a wide nine, he's in charge of the C gap. You have a three technique in charge of the B gap. Your mic is the A gap. You have a nose who's in charge of the other A gap. You have a will in the B gap, and then you have a defensive end in the C gap. You are gapped accordingly, but because they have a fullback and a running back, you're a man short in the box. And so that is with that is where in the fit, out of the fit, who's going to make it? This is why seven man spacing, and I'll explain this a little bit further as we get into each one. Seven man spacing, you have to find ways to cancel gaps. Okay. You can't just play everybody gap and then have two guys down. Now you're a man short in case somebody wants to block. And a lot of this comes down to does the quarterback run the ball? If the quarterback's running the ball, remember you've got two extra blockers. You've got a fullback and a running back or a sniffer and a running back that can now block. How are you matching those guys up when you have two guys deep? Okay. Eight man spacing is middle of the field close. So if seven man spacing is middle of the field open, that's your split field coverage tools. Middle of the field close. This is your cover three, cover one coverage tools. This is eight man spacing. So the one thing that we're doing is in a 21 personnel where we have a Sam, Mike, and a Will, we have seven, right? We're going to bring one of the safeties down. So let's just say we're going to go weak rotation. We're going to bring our weak safety down. Now we have eight men directly in charge of the box this gives us a plus one mentality in the run game we have an extra guy but we're still going to be short our quarterback player is in the middle of the field this is why a lot of teams especially in the nfl are transitioning to quarters as more of these as more of these quarterbacks can run the ball you've got to have this kind of eight this seven or nine man spacing and again i'll get to nine man so again you have your quarterback player in the middle of the field. In seven-man spacing, you're really just kind of short. You better have your option rules. You're going to have to find some way to change the fit structure or do something with the front in order to combat what's going on. You got to cancel. You got to cancel blockers. You're trying to really block five with four in your defensive line. Nine man spacing. This is going to be where do we see this? This is kind of that Narduzzi Meg quarters right four lock we've got corners basically locked on number one the safeties are both locked on number two and they are in the fit they are aggressive this is also known as blitz coverage there's a famous quote of when alabama played michigan state one time with, with narduzzi there you know saban talks about hey what do you think of the michigan state defense and it's that quote of well it's just blitz coverage 
And that's essentially what it is. It's zero coverage with rules or it's man with rules, right? If you're going to play quarters, nine man spacing is really good against teams that want to run the quarterback. Why? Because you're gapping everybody out. And then you also have your safeties right there, ready in the fit. So that's where you get the nine man corners are not responsible for anything in the run. They're always responsible for number one. So this is why you see it in four lock. If you're a quarters team and you're playing a lot of four lock or made quarters, this is what you are playing. You're playing nine-man spacing. So from there, if you blitz it all and you're using max blitzes, right, you're gapping everybody out and you're playing man coverage, that again is nine-man spacing. You've gapped everybody out. You have, you have two extra defenders in both the safeties that can actively play in the box. So in, in the, the best way to do this in 21 personnel, the safety in, on top of the tight end, if the tight end blocks, he's fitting right now. Because that's his man. If the tight end blocks, he has no coverage responsibility. We're not trying to close the post. We're not, you know, we're not boxing the post. There's no post control. There's no hash control. We're not trying to, hey, what is number one doing? There is no zone principles. If my guy blocks, I'm fitting right now. And so it's an aggressive way to attack. So again, seven man spacing, smoke and mirrors. Let's make it, let's, let's, let's give a, a, an allegory before, right? Seven man spacing is smoke and mirrors. I'm going to do something with the front to cancel gaps so that we can play seven man spacing because we're going to be a man short eight man spacing. I've got a post player in the middle of the field. I'm going to single gap or what I call indicator fits off of things. We are going to, let's say the sniffer slides across for its split zone. Then we are going to, everybody's going to move over a gap. Okay, that's what an indicator fit is. And everybody's going to move over a gap. Again, my quarterback player is in the middle of the field. Nine man spacing means I am gapped out. Everybody's aggressive. I'm either blitzing every gap or we are going to play May quarters. In short, it is the number of players directly involved in the run fit. So that's the best way to think of it. So let's break down each spacing in the simplest form. Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube, I've got this to split zone. I've got everybody lined up for visual purposes. I have everybody lined up in the typical Y off split backfield. So we've got two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. I've got a sniffer or a tight end set to the two receiver side and the running back set away. So when I'm talking spacing, that is the formation that I'm going to use. I call this gun far split twin open that's what that's what we're doing it's 11 personnel 21 20 personnel however you want to label seven man spacing is essentially where i live in my philosophy of football i i mean my my brand is called match quarters this is where i anchor in in terms of philosophy what i learned uh especially when i was ga at baylor here's the thing you are having a seventh man but what you're really trying to do in the box is fit with six guys. And now that may seem counterintuitive, but you are going to get a seventh man depending on where the running back is. So for instance, this is gun far split. The back is away from the nickel. The nickel can be in the fit. The safety to the back now is going to hold high for that glance RPO or something like that. There's also another philosophy is – I don't want that nickel in the fit at all. I want him completely removed. We are not going to allow you to have any kind of flop read, nothing. So we are always going to have that out. Well, then your seventh man is usually going to be that ba ba boundary safety. That's why when you talk to split field defensive teams, the number one positions on that field outside of a boundary corner, because a boundary corner creates just, it unlocks the whole defense is your nickel. Is he a coverage guy or is he a linebacker that is kind of moonlighting as a safety? If you're a third corner, then you don't want him in the fit. So your boundary safety is going to be the one that is kind of like a down safety. He's got to be able to play in the box. If you kind of have that three, that, that, 
four three mentality. So you have a hybrid at nickel, but he's really kind of that hybrid Sam. He's not a linebacker, but he's not a safety. Then now you can play in the fit, out of the fit. It also determines too off of how are you fitting things. Are you a lever spill lever team? Are you a box team? Are you trying to odd, you know, odd fit everything and you're more of a spill overlap? I know coaches, there's some coaches that, hey man, I'm just putting them in 30s. And we're going to spill overlap everything. I don't really care. So it depends on the run fit. And I'll go through run fits later. But in, in this, this is going to be seven-man spacing. Um, this is, I'm trying to fit with six guys, but I'm going to get the seventh guy depending on where it is. So what I have presented is the nickel is out of the fit. This is the way that I I was I t- I was taught this at Baylor. This is the way that I've tried to run it. I, you know, I've coached in Texas. It's a big RPO, heavy uh, quarterback centric spread centric uh, kind of ecosystem here especially at the five and six a level so you don't want to necessarily get that nickel kind of inching in because you will get the flop reads meaning that the running back set away but they're really reading your nickel so if you're one of those that you're always slamming that nickel down they set the running back away they can easily still rpo you so what are the spacing rules seven man spacing middle field open again split field structures Split field coverage. This is your quarters. This is your cloud, palms, two read. This is cover two. This is what you are basing out of. Overhang to the running back is out of the fit. Again, I'm going to camp rules. Uh, That philosophy can change depending on who your nickel is. You don't want to give up RPOs, but you still have to defend the run. This is a movement cancel philosophy as the defense is a man short. So, In terms of movement philosophy, let's break down a split zone. If I am the 5-3, I am a vertically attack. I am attacking vertically. I am not reacting to the block at all. I'm attacking vertically through my gap. If I am to the nose five side, I am reading the next man inside. So if I am a G, I'm a two I, I'm reading the center. C away, close the A. I'm canceling both A gaps by going against the center if the center's to me i'm pinning my gap for the five technique the five heavy or five h as i like to call it you are reading that tackle if the tackle flashes his hands it's a base block i'm ripping inside i'm taking the b gap okay that's where that two gap comes from right my primary gap is the c gap but if i get a certain thing i need to close that off this is why two in seven man spacing you get a lot of pirates you get a lot of rip techniques. You get a lot of, uh, you know, not stunts, exit stunts, tech stunts, depending on how they want to do this. You, this is where you're going to get your stunts. Okay. And, and I like to think of it like this. If you are presented with 10 personnel, two by two, you want to move, right? Cause you have a five man box. It's five on five. Yes. You have a hip backer that is in charge of some gap. He can, you can make him into the primary bold player B gap. That's fine. But you want you, if you do that, he's going to get red and they're going to RPO you to death. They're going to, you're going to throw into space. So you have to eliminate gaps. This is where the heavy technique comes involved. This is why against three by one, you want to run an under front so that your Mike linebacker can cover down to number three, and then you can close the B gap. So technically you are getting into odd spacing but you're doing it through movement, which is why it's called seven man spacing. So in the image that I provided, so if you're watching this on YouTube, in the image that I provided, the nickel and the boundary safety are both in purple because they can be part of the run fit, but they're also covered first. So in this, in a split zone, most time the action is going to go away from the running back. So everybody is going to step to the field on the offensive line. So my G who is set to the running back is now seeing the center go away. He's going to close the a gap. The mic now is working to the next a gap. The tackle is stepping down as he zones which is telling that defensive end i'm going to run the heel line and i'm going to spill the first blocker he's going to close the b gap so my backers are now working a to c but i'm not teaching it as though it is the tight front that that's i think where the difference is i'm canceling gaps we're moving hopefully 
my nose is able to bring that guard with him and we're canceling both of the a gaps and that mic can even fit almost all the way into the c gap so you have an outside the shoulder on the polar inside the shoulder on polar and somebody that's spilling and then you have a cap defender by the safety that is how you are able to get your numbers back you're stealing gaps you're taking numbers um, i'm going to go into some of these different ways that teams do this they do this from reduction front so let's say i'm an odd spacing team i'm not even spacing the g front to me that's typically going to be an even spacing the will linebacker is in charge of the b gap unless we get these things by the tackle. And so then we're going to reduce the defensive end to close the B gap, allowing him to then be more free. We're canceling gaps. The nose again is canceling both a gaps by reading the center. If the center, let's say it's, let's say the center steps to him and they double through the nose. Well, then the Mike linebacker is going to fit the a gap because that gap is presented to him. He's not going to float around. He's not ball fitting. He's reading his gap. He's reading his guards. I like to call reduction fronts. I call them MLB fronts. So they're baseball teams in my language and you have reductions. Reductions mean you have movement, right? So a reduction front, these are becoming more and more popular as these tight front defenses, mint defenses from really five, six, seven years ago are now transitioning to more of a four down structure because they're trying to get a pass rush. So in a reduction front, this is the one that I'm going to use. This is called angels. So we want to set the strength call away from the nickel. So again, we have the exact same presentation. We have a gun far split twin open. We're going to set the front away from the nickel. The nickel goes to the passing strength. So now the front is set to the back. Our five and our three is set to the back. We are going to reduce away from the running back. So instead of playing a true read heavy, react, then attack, we are actually going to try and face up that tackle right now. I'm going to be in a five technique. I'm going to step to a four the moment that ball snapped because I want him to show me his cards right now. If he bypasses me, I'm going into the B gap. I'm ricocheting and I'm staying in the B gap. If he engages me, I want to play heavy through him and I'm bringing him with me to the B gap. If he down blocks, I'm punching his shoulder and I'm working through and I'm squeezing that B gap. The fits inside are going to be A to C fits, making it easy in the same fits for your linebackers. And nothing's changed for them if you are from the tight mint universe. So what we're doing is we're canceling gaps post snap to get odd spacing, even though we're presenting an even front. So the reduction is away from the running back. The running back is to the single receiver side. So the five technique is now going to be the heavy technique. He's going to have a heavy through the, through the tackle. If the G is away from the running back, it's heavy. That's what we've been presented. If the three technique is away from the running back, okay, let's say you're setting it off the tight end, okay? So we want, let's say this week, instead of going to the back, we're always going to go to the tight end. So now I've got a three technique to the tight end, five and a three. That's when we want to run our pop stunt. So here, if we were to get a quad stack, right? So the nickel is to the two receivers, the running back and tight end are aligned, or let's say that the, the tight end is away. It doesn't matter. If the running back is to the nickel, that's when we're going to get our read pop stunt or what I call wedge technique, where we're both stepping to the tackle. If the tackle blocks out, then we're going to fold. So normally you're going to get your zone action away from the back. So if they're in a split action, that's when you get split zone. They're going to move away. That's where we get the read pop stunt. So it's like a, a, a read text stunt. So that's where this reduction comes in. This is one of the popular ways of I need to use my split field tools, but I need to find ways to reduce the front. We're going to do it off of rules. This one, angels away from the nickel. You can also do it away from the back to the back, however you decide to do that. And that there are whole systems that have these reduction fronts off of them. So again, what we're doing is we're reducing at a certain spot. Angels, this front, sets the strength away from the nickel, 
and reduces away from the running back. So we're away and away. Let's talk about eight-man spacing now. Eight-man spacing is cover one, cover three spacing. So we have a middle field player, right? And we're going to go off of indicator fits. So middle field close coverage, single gap spacing off of the indicator. We're not playing heavy anymore. Nobody's reading anybody. We're fitting our gap. In the, in the front, we're going vertical. We're attacking, not reacting. The indicator fit, so again, we're going off of gun far split, twin open. We're going to go ahead, simple th cover three rules. If I've got a three by one, I drop the safety to the, to the tight end. So if I got three by one, which is what we got, the field safety is coming down. If it was two by two, the boundary safety would come down. So here we have a three buzz alignment. We get split zone working across, which means everybody's going to move a gap. So now, the as we get split zone, the safety is going to fit the A gap, the mic is going to fit the B gap, and our wheel is now going to fit the D gap. So everybody still has gaps. Now, how does this become eight-man spacing? If that slot were to be a tight end and we had 21 personnel, the nickel would be added into that. You could then go weak rotation. So that's how you get your fits off of that. The defense is plus one against the run. If you look at us, we have a D gap defender, meaning that we have a plus one in the running back. If you go back to seven man spacing, we have enough for every gap. But that doesn't mean that we have an extra defender. We have a cap defender who's coming from depth or coming from a cover down. So again, you can see in here, if you're watching from YouTube, you can see we have a five technique in the C gap. We have a three technique in the B gap. Our field safety is folding into the A gap. Our nose is in the A gap. Our mic is folding into the B gap. We are spilling the polar. Okay, we're still spilling because he's got to fit that C gap between the tackle and the tight end, and then our will is in the D gap. So we are able to have a D gap defender. Again, let's go back to seven-man spacing, split zone. We have a five technique in the A gap, I mean, in the, in the C gap. We have a three technique in the B gap. Our nose is going to close both A gaps. So our nose is taking both A gaps through movement. Our mic now is going to move over to the other A gap. Our heavy technique is closing the B gap. So then our will now has the C gap. Our extra defender technically has the A gap, but he can still move over. And that's where you talk about stealing gaps. So yes, the mic now has the opposite A, but if it's not there, he can keep going. And that's what we want. We want to wash the front. I call it a fluid front. You want that front to move. So again, you're stealing gaps in seven-man spacing, you're indicator fitting or slinging, slinging those fits, moving those fits opposite as that tight end goes across. So coach, what if it's power and they stay right there? Or it's zone load and the tight end stays on there? Well, if the tight end stays there, there he's the indicator. Now you're going to have a D-gap defender by the, by the free safety your mic will fit the A and your will will fit the B and you're still, again, have a D-gap defender. Technically, you could say your D-gap defender is coming from the middle of the field and that is your other one. And that is where the plus one for the offense comes because your quarterback player is in the middle of the field. So hopefully I'm making sense as we go from seven to eight, nine man spacing, AKA blitz coverage. It's typically the easiest. This is single gap fits. You're going to have a D gap defender on both sides, right? So the presentation again is gun far split. You're playing mag quarters, what I call mix. You're going to have corners on number one. Your safeties are on number two. If two blocks down on the slot, that free safety, the field safety is fitting right off of his shoulder. You've got your nickel fitting the D gap. You've got your N fitting the C, three fitting the B. Mike is fitting his A gap. He doesn't change A gap, A gap, A gap. Nose is going to be in the A gap. Will is the B gap. Again, that D end is spilling because he's got the C gap. He has to stay connected to that tackle. And then your safety is aggressively downhill off of that. I call it a travel technique. He's aggressively 
taking that and now you have a D gap. So what you've got is two D gap defenders, no matter what. So you've got your eight man spacing with the nine man coming off of the block of the slot. This is why it gets confusing when you see guys draw up 10 personnel and they're talking nine man spacing, eight man spacing. And you're like, well, there's the box is the five offensive linemen. There's not five offensive. There's not five defense. You know, I don't understand that there's five offensive linemen. There's a running back, but then we've got guys covered down. How does that, uh, uh, you know, how do we get that? That's where it gets confusing. That's why, again, it's kind of like how you teach cover three off of 21 personnel kind of X's on the whiteboard you're going to do that if you want to teach spacing or you want to really understand spacing, draw it to 21 personnel I formation first and then expand that out. And then as people move out, it's still the same thing. Your coverage rules are still going to apply, but it changes the spacing. Again, fits within these can change. Okay. You can cancel gaps. Uh, in nine man spacing you can do you can still play heavy technique uh, but that that might change the fit structure how you want to fit gap scheme things like that but just remember you are being aggressive with your overhangs right so if we go to seven man spacing the only overhang you got is your nickel and your will right or your nickel and your boundary safety or your uh, boundary safety and, and that's it. So you're going to only have one guy being that overhang, right? And you always have overhangs, but are they aggressively in that? So for us, the nickel and the boundary safety and seven man spacing are our overhangs. They're our force players, right? They're in charge of, you know, option principles, right? So if we have that, then one is going to be quick down. The other one's going to be late. And that's where you get the seventh man. So again, you're trying to fit it with six and eight man spacing your nickel, your will. Uh, it could be uh, however you want it, depending on your safety, right? Where the rotation is, you're still going to have your overhangs. It's the same presentation, but now we're indicator fit. We have a plus one mentality and then nine man spacing. Everybody's in a gap. Everybody's aggressive to the run. So let's transition to fitting the run and then how teams do it. So again, I'm a split field guy, match quarters. That's kind of where I base out of. We want to box fit things. That doesn't mean that you have to in, in split field. You can lever spill lever it. You can spill overlap. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go off of just a typical under front. How are you fitting power? How are you fitting gap scheme? We just went over split zone. So if we get power, we want to try and fit the box with six. That's what we're trying to do. We want to, we want our coverage defenders. They let them stay at the table or let them cover down. If it's the same linebacker, nickel linebacker. Okay. So we get the J block by the tight end. Again, going with the same formation, we get a J block by the tight end on the defensive end. He's going to spill that. Okay, we're trying to log the pole. The three technique is going to work the B gap, hold the B gap steady. Our nose is going to take the block back of the center. Now, this is where you can get creative. You can have him cross face uh, if you want to. Just understand that that boundary safety better hit tight if you don't get a collapsed by the by the the defensive end. But if you think about it, we get a pull. Now the nose is going to be in that gap. I want the mic to hit the outside shoulder. I don't want it leaking out. Remember, I've got a nickel. I've got a third corner, or I got we're playing bracket, and I've got a safety coming from the table. I don't want him to always be slamming down in the fit. I need him out of the fit. I'm coverage first over the two receivers. So I need that mic to block. I need him to box that, and that will linebacker has to get over the block back. He has to. And it's one of those things, and I heard Don Brown talk about this one time. If you are a linebacker and you cannot climb over a block back, then you probably shouldn't be playing linebacker. But coach, you know, he's going to get stuck there. Okay, well, what if you're a spill overlap team, isn't he having to work over the block back regardless? So to me, that is a technique that has been in football forever. It's something that you work constantly with your backers. If the guard pulls in front of me, I got to get over the top. Now, I want to spill that with the mic back to the wheel, and then my boundary safety is sink and slide. 
sink down for cutback in case my nose for some reason gets front side, sink down for cutback. And then if my wheel gets stuck, you're the cap defender. So what I really want is an inside outside cap on that. That's where you get the six man blocking, right? That's where I'm fitting it with six. I should be able to tackle it with six. I should have a plus one on the polar, right? And my seventh man is usually coming from depending on how we're fitting it off of that. If they're a true RPO team and they don't flop read, then we can get that. We can get, we can play apex. We can get that guy in there really quick. Okay. How is that fitting counter? Counter, we're going GY counter. So now we're going to the back. We're playing the same side. The five technique is going to spill the kick out because we want to log that. We don't want to box it and create a crease, especially if it's same side. You don't want to box with that defensive end because it creates a vertical seam and that running back can hit it really quick. And so that Mike, who's got to come all the way over, that makes it really difficult for him. And I've talked about this before. When, when I got to life school, we didn't have great linebackers. And so what I wanted to do is make it as simple for possible for those guys. So I put them in thirties. One, it helps us when we started running some creepers because we had to produce, we had to produce something, right? Cause we couldn't play sit and get, I didn't have defensive linemen that could just sit and get. So we had to produce something, right? So we're going to, we're going to use some of these creepers, get, get the full defender away, not, not drop the DN. It almost was like a five man. I call it seesaw action. So we, we knew that, but what we needed was a way to make everything look static. So instead of having them in 1040s, we moved them to 3030s, and that way they could get into that. And then, two, if we wanted to, it allowed them to then hit their blitz really fast. But also, if I had to get over that, I'm, I'm only a few steps away, and now I'm there. So that's kind of what we fixed on that. If you're really worried about it, you could always put them in, in 1040s, but you're going to be late to power. And you're great to counter, but you're late to power. So 30, 30, 30s is what we decided on that. So again, going with counter, defensive end is going to spill. Hopefully we can log that, that tight end. The wheel linebacker is going to hammer down on the outside shoulder. Mike's going to get up. And then our cap defender comes from the boundary safety. So again, it's a six-man fit with plus the overhang. That's where your seven comes in. Lever spill, lever is another one that is really popular. The box is not necessarily popular. Unless you are playing spread and you're in a very spread-centric ecosystem, you're not probably trying to box. So if you play a ton of teams and they're all playing the old Brile system, you pro you're probably playing box. You want to you wanna fit that like with six, and we'll figure out the overhang depending on where the running back is or game plan. Lever spill lever is going to be in the fit, out of the fit, right? If I am the overhang away from the back, I am in the fit. I am that lever away from the running back. If I am to the fit, I'm going to be, or if I'm to the running back, I'm going to be late. So power, the same linebacker using the same split action tied into the two receiver, the same linebacker is going to be in the fit. He is going to be aggressive. So what we get in lever spill lever is instead of the mic hitting the outside shoulder of the polar, he's actually going to hit inside and spill it to the same linebacker. The will, instead of getting over top, he's going to have a run through. So he's actually the run through. And so your boundary safety doesn't have to be sink and slide. He now can stay at the table as long as he can hold for that glance route. Now counter, the will is going to spill it to the boundary safety who has to be aggressive. Now this is different. And, and well, coach, how do you play lever spill lever with the back to the single receiver side? You're going to spill it. You're going to have to get that boundary safety down. So this is one of those things where you, you are playing proximity. The boundary safety has to be that lever. So you, you have to sink aggressively, hold that glance route as much as you can, and then you're going to get it spilled to you. And this is why teams, if they know that you're, you're going to bring that down safety, especially if it's three by one, you like to really fit it. This is one of those things that they can get you with, especially if, Oh, I've got to hold this guy out. Now, if you're playing lever spill lever again, this goes back to why I like to box fit things, even though, uh, we can lever spill lever. We can spill over. I like to box things because I want that guy to be able to play from the table, regardless of whether he's in the fit or out of the fit. So if you are a nickel defense that wants that guy out, your boundary safety kind of has to understand. That's why I like box outside, inside cap, let that 
guy behind that's at, in the secondary cap fit these gap schemes. And then finally, spill overlap. All spill overlap is you're taking the same principles from the six-man fit that I showed, the seven-man spacing fit that I showed. But you're, what you're saying is you're adding the extra defender as kind of the, the backside is going to be the, le the lever. So you're going to spill the pole, overlap, and then you're going to have a run through behind. So you're still, if you look at all of these, you're still getting an outside, you're still getting an inside, you're still getting some sort of a, of a lever away or a cap defender on top. They're all the same. It's just philosophy. Everybody, and, and how are you fitting it within that? So this is why I go back to, there is no cookie cutter defense. Seven man spacing. I just showed you G front mechanics, reduction mechanics. Even spacing, odd spacing. How are you fitting it? Box, lever, spill, lever, spill, overlap. It all goes down to what you want to do, okay? Eight-man spacing. Are you indicator fit? Are you going to play with a little bit of movement? How is that going to work? Eight-man spacing, you still have that in there. And so you can still, again, with eight-man spacing, a lot of people like lever, spill, lever, right? Because it's just easy. Everybody's kind of moving over one. You have lever, spill, lever. Uh, sometimes you can still box out of it. You can still spill overlap inside. You're really talking about your two inside guys and what you're doing with your mic and your will, not necessarily what you're doing with your two overhangs. So going back to that, you can fit different ways. I know of DCs that are like, I'm doing nothing but spill overlap. I'm doing nothing but box. I'm doing nothing but lever, spill, lever. And it keeps those run fits. Where it gets convoluted for the kids is... Okay, in seven-man spacing, we do this. Okay, let's say in seven-man spacing, we box. Okay, in eight-man spacing, we single gap, lever, spill, lever. Okay, now it changes for that mic and the will. Now that mic or will, depending on who, who is getting the puller, the guy that's initially to the puller, the inside back to it, initially to the puller, he's got to understand, I now I'm going to spill it instead of boxing it. And so... That is where it can get confusing, and that's why you have to be an elite teacher on some of this stuff as you're going through this. And again, none of this stuff is perfect. If, it, if there was one perfect way of doing something, everybody would be doing it, and I wouldn't be talking about this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have match quarters because everybody would be doing the same thing. So let's wrap it up really quickly. Hopefully, again, we've gone through this. I've made it as simple as possible without going for you know three hours on this and drawing up everything. Uh, because again, this is so a podcast form more than it is anything else. Coach beat concept to talk about run fits, odd spacing, even spacing, closing the B gap, B gap bubble, seven man spacing too high, eight man spacing one high, nine man spacing blitz rules, zero coverage, meg quarters. Okay. Simplest way of doing that. The actual fits can be different depending on your philosophy. And I think that's important. It's your philosophy. There is no great way of doing it. Again, I, I like I've said and multiple times during this, I know guys that all they do is box. I know guys that all they do is spill overlap. I know guys that all they do is lever spill over. Okay. Regardless, I know guys that change per spacing. It's all on how you want to fit it, how you're comfortable teaching, how you can get your guys to do it. Okay. At the end of the day, how you fit power when you draw it up, it's all relatively the same. It's just who's getting there first, who's getting there second, who's boxing, who's spilling, who's the lever, all of that language. That's you. You teach it. I'm not. I'm here to give you ideas. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Best to start with 21 personnel and then move to 10 personnel when you're explaining this. Okay, start with 21 personnel. Look, here's our guys. Here's seven guys. Here's eight guys. Here's nine guys. Then here it is versus 11. 11 three by one, 11 two by two. Then here it is, 10 personnel, 10 personnel, two by two, 10 personnel, three by one. That's the best way to do it. So as you move away, guys understand, you know, 10 personnel, if you're going to run eight man spacing, you've got to have two guys in the box because you have to have those guys sitting in those gaps because you have two overhangs outside. Okay. So it looks different when you have 11 personnel. And then it looks different again when you have 10 personnel. So always start with 21 personnel, move to 10. You can mix both with certain calls. That's modern defense. And both, I mean, odd and even spacing. Creepers are, and sims are, odd spacing blitzes. You're sending four, but you're closing both the B gaps, but you're being intentional with the blitz, and you're fitting A to C off of that. 
So that is that is kind of where it's at. In seven man spacing, you can then be really intentional about how you want to do this. That's where I showed you the reduction front. Maybe you like to read pop. Uh, anytime you get the three technique away from the back, you want to read pop it. Okay. Maybe if you get the tight end to you, you want to exit stun it just because there are big zone load teams. So you want that in just digging it out in there and then having that, uh, ta having that tackle loop out. I'm going to have all, I'm going to have some of this stuff that I've written about uh, linked up uh, in, in, in the, in the mentions and in, in below. So I've got a lot of that stuff. If you're curious about it, there's plenty out there. This is the Jimmy pony, like it's seven man spacing. There's so much stuff. It's Jimmy pony, torch stunt. You have the reduction front, heavy technique, G adjust, which is what I've talked about forever. There's tons of ways of canceling gaps. Okay. Uh, so don't feel like, Oh man. Okay. I'm interested in this. I need to fix what we're doing against seven man spacing. We're running more quarters or, Hey, we're, we're moving more to a cover three defense, a single high. Cause I get that all the time. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I get guys who I've talked to when I started this in 2016, that were big quarters guys. And then I don't hear for them. We're here from them from a couple of years because the district that they're in flipped and now it's a big run heavy district. They need to be in cover three. And then they get a new district or new teams. It times change. And now everybody's going spread. Oh, hey, I need to come back and refresh on quarters. And I've done it vice versa. I've had guys that are, hey, I'm a big cover three guy. Then, you know, I talked to them a couple of years ago about quarters and then now they're back to cover three. So it, it doesn't matter. Football is cyclical in nature. Teams change philosophies change uh your philosophy should change if you're doing this the exact same things you were 20 years ago 10 years ago and you haven't kind of like revamped it you're probably behind right now if you're one of those you're like i can just stay long enough that it'll recycle through and i'll be right again then you know good luck to you right uh, so you can again you can mix both of these calls and i think that's where modern defense is headed right being able to run odd and even spacing being able to run multiple coverages, but you have to understand how the run fits. Run fits matter. You know, Kirby Smart a couple of years ago in that talked about his defense was elite because if we can fit with as the least amount of defenders possible, then we can play coverage. And we live in a pass first world. So how can I do that? You need to understand how coverage dictates the fit. And that's the most important part. And then from there, how do you want to fit these gap schemes? How do you want to fit these certain things? So hopefully I was able to help you out. Hopefully I simplified it again. If I'm wrong about something, please let me know. Um, I, we're all trying to learn and, and be better. I think, uh, you know, I always default to Cunningham's law, which Cunningham got one of the guys that created Wikipedia always talks about, if you want to find the right answer, put the wrong thing out there on the internet, someone will share with you the right answer. So that's why I think too, for coaches, especially, especially this time of year, We've gone through spring. We're headed into summer. We're all wanting to go on vacation, right? We're all wanting to get there and we're kind of relaxing. So we're all kind of anticipating the end of the year. We're all on edge. We're all bored because we've watched all the film that we possibly can and get our hands on. And we've also installed stuff. We're doing things. You know, we, the clinic season's over. And so we're all kind of at each other's throats. Remember, there's not a best way of doing something. There are right things that you want to do. There are best practices, but your ecosystem is individualized to you. Make sure you're doing what's best for your kids. And then from there, what I always tell young guys, learn a system, be an expert at it. And then every year, try and try and prove it wrong. What sticks is going to be your best practices. There are certain things in football that you just can't, you, you, you got to have fundamentals. You got to have technique. You got to be able to tackle. You got to be able to run the ball. And so fitting how that fits, that's up to you. Coverage dictates the fits. Thank you for joining me on uh, the Art of X show. Make sure to subscribe to Match Quarter Substack. That's matchquarters.substack.com. You can find all the things that I've ever done on matchquarters.com in the template shop, in the archive. I've got links to my books. Make sure that you bookmark that and then you subscribe to Match Quarter Substack. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Even Reddit, I'm on everything. So wherever you social, type in match quarters, you should be able to find me. And then on Twitter, obviously, it's at the underscore coach underscore A. I'll have links to everything. Thank you again for joining me, and I'll see you next time.